Welcome back to my YouTube video. In this video, I will guide you to install Arch Linux without Arch install script. Step-by-step -step guide. The installation steps can differ at some points depending on whether you have a UEFI or Legacy B iOS system. Most new systems come with UEFI these days. I have written it here with a focus on the UEFI system, but I'll also mention the steps that are different for the Legacy B iOS systems. Make sure that you have backed up your files or else you'll lose all of them. You have been warned. Requirements for installing Arch Linux. Let's install Arch Linux. Download the Arch Linux ISO. You can download the ISO from the official website. You will have to create a live USB of Arch Linux from the ISO you just downloaded. Check step-by-step -step tutorial video in my channel. Once you have created a live USB for Arch Linux, shut down your PC. Plug in your USB and boot your system. While booting, keep pressing F2, F10, or F12 key, depending upon your system, to go into boot settings. Do note that in some cases, you may not be able to boot from live USB with secure boot enabled. If that's the case with you, disable the secure boot first. Also, make sure your SATA mode is set into AHCI here. Select to boot from USB or removable disk. Once you do that in the system boots, you should see an option like this. You can connect to Wi-Fi interactively using this helpful utility called IWCTL. Just enter this command and follow the on-screen instructions. IWCTL. Next, you can list all your wireless interfaces slash devices connected using the command. You need to select the preferred one. Scan for available network using the command below. While it scans for the network, you don't get to see the network names yet. So to see the connections available, you can type in Station WLAN 0 Get Networks. You can connect to your target Wi Fi using the command Station WLAN 0 Connect, name of network slash Wi Fi. If it is protected by a password, you will be asked for it. Enter the credentials and you should be connected to it. Exit the network setup prompt using Control plus C. Now we're connected to the network, but to make sure, you can check if you could use the internet by using the ping command pinggoogle.com. If you get bytes in reply, you are connected. Use Control c to stop the ping reply. Next step, check if you have UEFI mode enabled. Some steps are different for UEFI and non-UEFI systems. You should verify if you have UEFI enabled system or not. Use this command. If this directory exists, you have a UEI enabled system. You should follow the steps for UEFI system. The steps that differ are clearly mentioned. Next step, use this command to list all the disk name on your system, LSBLK. Your hard disk should be labeled slash dev slash SD A or slash dev NVME 0 N1. Please use the appropriate disk labeling for your system. Here, mine is NVME 0 N1. For editing disk and partition, I'm using CF disk or F disk. I'm using CF disk, CF disk, NVME 0 1 and enter. If you are using a UEFI system, create a 513 megabyte EFI system partition at the beginning of the disk. If your system is not UEFI, skip this step. Then create a Linux system partition with the desired size for your installation. You may also create a Linux swap partition, but in this example, no swap file is added. Now that you have your disk partitions ready, it's time to create file system on it. Follow the steps for your system, creating file system for UEFI system. So you have two disk partitions and the first one is EFI type. Create a FAT32 file system on it using the MKFs command, mkfs.fat-f32 slash dev slash nvme 0 and one p one If you have SDA, replace with SDA1. Now create an X4 file system on the root partition mkfs.x4 slash dev slash nvme 0 n 1 p 1. For non UEFI system, you only have one single root partition. So just make it x4 colon mkfs.x4 slash dev slash nvme 0 n 1 p 1. Next step, install Arch Linux. You'll be installing it on the root directory, so mount it first. Note that this is valid for UEFI systems. With root mounted, it's time to use the wonderful pack strap script to install all the necessary packages. Packstrap slash MNT, base Linux, Linux firmware nano. It will take some time to download and install these packages. 
I have added Nano Text Editor to the list because you'll need to edit some files post-installation. Next step, configure the installed Arch system. Generate a fstab file to define how disk partitions, block devices, or remote file systems are mounted into the file system. Now use Arc Crute and enter the mounted disk as root. Actually, now you are using the just installed Arch Linux system on the disk. You'll have to do some configuration changes to the installed system so that you could run it properly when you boot from the disk. To set up time zone on Linux, you can use first find your time zone, time to tackle list time zones, exit from the list using control plus C or just Q, and then set it up like this. Replace Asia slash Kolkata with your desired time zone. Time detectable, set time zone, Asia slash Kolkata. Now network configuration, create a slash etc slash hostname file and add the hostname entry to this file. Hostname is basically the name of your computer on the network. In my case, I'll set the hostname as Arch. You can choose whatever you want. The next part is to create the host file, touch slash etc slash hosts and edit this slash etc slash host file with nano editor to add the following lines to it. Now set up root password. You should also set the password for the root account using the pass and command. You will be prompted to enter and retype your password to confirm. Next step, install this packages with Pacman. Pacman se sudo grub fe boot mgr network manager. Next step, create additional user and enforce privileges. Now create a new user and give permissions. In my case, Abhi is the new username I chose. User add dash m abhi for cert password passabun abhi. Enter the password for this user and confirm. Now you will be adding this user to a group of users that grant specific permissions. This should be self explanatory while the wheel group is needed for a user act as the super user. User mod dash ag wheel audio video storage abhi ather that you need to edit the visudo file. Use this command editor equals nano visudo. Uncomment this line, save and exit. Now next step is very important. Configure Grub. This is one of the crucial steps and it differs for UEFI and non-UEFI systems. Let me mention the steps for the UEFI systems first. We already installed Grub and Fibutengar you're using Pacman. Create the directory where EFI partition will be mounted, mkdir slash boot slash EFI. Now mount the ESP partition. Install grub, like this grub install dash target equals x86 underscore 64 dash EFI dash dash bootloader dash ID equals GRUB. EFI directory equals slash boot slash EFI. Then grub mkconfig minus o equals slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg. On non UEFI install grub like this grub install slash dev slash nvme 0 n1. Now enable install network manager system shoyo enable network manager dot service. Now here you will be confused more. When installing Arch Linux manually, you have several choices to customize your system. You can choose any lock screen or display manager, such as SDDM, GDM, or LightDM, which handle your graphical login screen. You can also choose any window manager, like i3, BSPWM, OpenBox, or HyperLAN, which control how windows look, move, and behave on your desktop. You can select any desktop environment, such as GNOME, KDE Plasma, XFCE, or LXQT, which provide a complete graphical interface with panels, settings, and applications. It's completely up to you. If you're a beginner and don't want to overload your brain, you can choose a desktop environment like GNOME or XFCE. They're simple and user-friendly. However, if you have a low-end device and enjoy experimenting, like I did in the past, you can install a window manager and build your desktop environment from scratch. In my case, I'm installing Hyperland AMD SDDM as Display Manager Pacman-S Hyperland 
XDG Desktop Portal Hyperland VL Clipboard Waybar Foot SDDM. The same goes for your terminal, file explorer, and many other tools. You have the freedom to choose whatever you prefer. I'm using Kitty as my terminal, and for audio, you'll want to install Pipewire. After that, don't forget to enable SDM System CTL, enable SDDM. Type exit to leave the Arch Crude environment, then unmount your system by typing umount L slash MNT or just umount slash MNT, and finally shut down your computer by typing shutdown now. Once it powers off, remove your installation media so you can boot into your new Arch Linux system with Hyperland. Note, when installing Arch Linux manually, you will have many choices to make, and each one will shape how your system looks and behaves. You can choose any display manager, such as SDDM, GDM, or LightDM, to handle your graphical login screen. You can also select a window manager, like i3, BSPWM, OpenBox, or Hyperlan, which controls how your windows move and interact on your desktop. Alternatively, you can install a complete desktop environment such as G, NOME, KDE Plasma, XFCE, or LXQT, which provides panels, settings, and built-in applications. These choices give you full control, but they can also be overwhelming if you're new to Arch Linux. If you are a beginner, it's better to start with a simple and user-friendly desktop environment like GNOME or XFCE. However, if you're using a low-end device or enjoy experimenting, you can install a window manager and build your own desktop environment from scratch. Arch Linux offers freedom, but that freedom comes with the responsibility to configure and maintain everything yourself. Proceed with curiosity, but also with caution.